Well, hello, welcome to Drawing Love Fire. I'm Valerie, your neighborhood photography artist, and I'm joined with Hubby. Oh, I'm really tired. <laughs> He's really tired today. And I am picking up on a burning that I have not done anything with except for the last couple of days on camera in t almost two years. I didn't realize it had been what? that long. Yep. I looked it up to see when the first video was, and it was July 26, 2017. So this is a 12 by 16. Oh my God. I know. It is on the uh, Dick Blick birch panel that I'm no longer using. And I should have popped up a picture of where we left off so we would know. But actually, maybe I can quickly pop up the picture. We shall see. Yeah, I turned my fingers off. Alrighty, so the last place we were at was... It's probably going to be huge, too, when I do this. <laughs> yep. was here two years ago. In group, I did post an update of where... Sorry about this. Where I had picked up uh, this last time so I've done more to it and here's the thing because I walked away from it for almost two years I've been having to fix things because there's things that I would do differently than what I've got now so now I gotta figure out where the file is for me to click it off of the screen <laughs> Oh, sorry, it's been a day. There it is. All right, so we're going to get started. I have actually been burning my darks between uh, five and a half and six, and I've been using the 18M. I started this one with the Burn Master and Colwood. <clears throat> sorry about that. Today is special cocoa day. And uh, so I am on five and a half. I know it's going to be dark, and what I've been doing for this area that is in shadow, um, what I can do is I will pop up this one, is not the one I wanted, I want that one, there we go, this is a sepia version so you can see it better, and this still needs to go much darker, make sure I'm on camera. I haven't burned this big in a long time between the bear and all I'm doing is drawing across for the dark yeah how are you gonna make it much darker it looks really dark already oh it, it needs to go darker in this area and what I'm doing is drawing in the direction or pulling the pin in the direction of the fur so I can use the pin to help give me some of this fur texture. Now I don't want it completely black because I do like the fur texture that's in here. And in the drawing, this space right here is a leaf. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it or if I'm going to just go ahead and burn it like fur and see where it gets lighter because the light starts hitting some of the areas. I'm just letting the pen cool off as I drag. And in doing this, I'm getting that clumped fur texture. And if it goes a little dark in some places, I can just go back over it, kind of blend it out. But because it's thick matte fur, I don't have to worry about it as much. But I do want those strokes to match the direction that the fur is going in. So we can kind of fake it a little bit. And I'm not trying to do parallel lines, and I'm trying to curve it a bit, and bring it across. And I've been having to try to remember um, what the pattern is, because when I did it, I knew what the lines meant. But since I've walked away from it for so long, I had to kind of update myself. And sometimes if I went a little bit more of a detailed line in the fur just here and there I can 
kind of turn the tip just slightly just so that I have to get more of the edge so I can get some of those lines and I'm also going to pop up and do some of the curly fur at the top so there you can see I did some thicker lines or thinner lines and it just kind of varies it up a little bit to make it a little more interesting what I should have done was print out a bigger picture so I can see because I was working from the my computer monitor I didn't have the camera on and so I'm working on five and a half I'm not feel, I'm holding the pen like I normally do now I'm not feeling any heat um, with it set at a higher setting which is nice now this one's a 12 by 16 and looking at the previous info on the other videos I guess I sanded this to 600 which between 4 and 600 you really can't tell I think this was a test to see what 600 would feel like and sometimes I'm going to turn it over to the right side of the tip just to get a little different stroke. Now what I can do and what I had here is I believe this one is the 2B. It's been a, this was another good pin for shading. I meant to look it up, but I didn't. So I think this one's the 2B. It's not one that I use all that often. Yeah, dripping cocoa everywhere. That's not good. Clean out my mess while this is heating up, which isn't going to take long. This is a thinner pin, even more so than the 18M. And so it's going to heat even more. And the tip's not as pointed, but the edges are sharper. So this is on six. So I can go back into this area that I wanted darker and darken it up even more. It's not often I get to smell my burnings. <laughs> no. I can smell this one. It's nice. So let's darken this up a little bit more. Remember, if I want a darker area, I need to slow the pin down and make sure I lift it up so that it reheats it's trying to go in the direction of the fur I need to make this area darker but I think I'll do that after I add more of the um, curly stuff in this right here is the side of the face so I need to draw this more in this line because I went a little heavy there but I can blend it out it's got to slow down and I think with this one I've had some other ideas to add to it that's not burning but, um, I'm going to give it a try because right here I still think that the grain looks like mountains so i'm gonna try adding some other stuff i think a uh, setting sun would go well with this guy but i'm not going to burn it i think i'm going to use metal leaf for that so see i've gotten even darker than when we started And there are little dots here, but I'm actually not worried about it because the fur is not smooth. It um, is fuzzy. So that just adds to what we're looking at. So I didn't say hi to anybody, and I feel bad. <laughs> hi, Eve, Sheila, David, Pete, Spence, Greg, Burl, Amy. 
Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cian, I'm doing this off the top of my head because you told me before. Did I get everybody? Yeah, I gotta catch my chat up for some reason. It's not registering everybody. Ah, here we go. Yeah, sometimes you have to click the top chat and then yeah, go back to live. I did that. I haven't been doing it again. Alright, there we go. I still would want this darker, but that at least shows I can go darker. And then we got folds right here. The eye is right here. It's small because the head is turned a little bit this way. That's why the snout looks like it's not looking at us completely forward because uh, this big guy had his head turned just a little bit when I took the photo. Um, it does look like I need to go a bit darker in here. And since I don't want to go fully black, I am moving in the direction of the fur a little quicker so I can use the heat to darken it without going black. Then go back over here and touch down slower. And see with this pen I can use the full tip versus the 18M where you're a little more angled though. With that one I was actually using um, using it flat because that meant I got a lighter burn as I drew out. So let's see here. And I could use a bigger shader, but I'm comfortable with these for what I'm doing. If I was doing a dark area, I, a background, I would go with a darker shader. Yes. Kind of drawing it down a little bit. You see, because I'm doing it quicker, I'm getting a lighter burn. So you're just kind of blocking it in a little bit so I know what direction I want to go in. And some of these areas are lighter. Let's see, our dark is right about. Okay. So we've got a lighter at the snout, goes dark a little bit here, a little bit here. We got some highlight, a reflected light hitting side fur. So I'm just going back over where I've touched down before. Here on my camera. Actually, I kind of miss doing my big pieces. Yeah, I'm glad that you went back to them because um, it's nice to see. Now, once I get this area, I'm, right now I'm just blocking in. I can go back with the 17 SR and put any individual hairs I may want. You have some nice comments. Oh. Thank you so much, Palette Junkie. And hello. And John Clemens also. Hi, John. Thank you. You're running away already? Well, I, I, I didn't have any stories lined up in my head. I'm sure Tad will come up with something. Uh, Alright, what kind of story? I'm going to have to have Jason tell ghost stories or closer to Halloween. Um, but, oh, I got the magazine stuff for the Ravens turned in, and they are looking over my pattern now for you guys, and they're going to have to narrow down my writing, which is not a surprise. <laughs> hey, Philip, not a surprise. I wrote it very detailed. So they're going to have to edit a bit. Now, hopefully the pattern I did will be fine for print. So do we have any 
questions about the dark fur. Now again, this is thick fur. If it was smooth fur, I wouldn't, I would be trying to be a little more careful with my strokes um, in order to keep that smoothness, but because this bison fur has so much texture, we can actually do less with it and get the feeling of the fur. Looks really good. It looks really like the bison fur. I'm having a hard time seeing my reference photo. I should have. I know I've got a big one somewhere, but. <laughs> Philip says he's just, uh, late. Hello to all. And Beryl says Halloween. No, I have to have summer first. <laughs> we can't skip supper. It's a nice 42 and cloudy outside today, which makes me happy. I just want to skip summer and go straight to fall. Our summers do get hot here, mm -hmm. especially since we don't have AC. Well, we kind of do. What, windows and fans? When it's almost 100 outside, that well, does. We have that one AC unit that was. It costs a fortune to run. All right, so I would keep building this up. And actually, on camera, it doesn't look too bad. This still needs to go darker. I think because this is the closest with with the head being turned the light when I took this photo when I took this photo the light is coming from this direction more overhead it wasn't the best time lighting wise um, or as dramatic as the photos I'd like but so that's why we do have a bit of highlight on the dark for it comes down Oops. It's pretty dramatic to me. Lighting wise, I mean, I think I may have altered it a little bit, bumping up certain things, my darks. Yeah. But then I had to lighten it so I could see where <laughs> the groups of fur went. Alright. So like here, and I've already start I already started darkening it, but just so we can see on my reference photo, I went lighter on the burn so I can go back even with this tip sorry now I have to keep moving the board but I'm using the side of it to darken up some of this fur to shape the face and with doing that Hopefully it gives it less of a flat feeling because right now the hair kind of feels flat to me. And then here I keep darkening this area because the hair overlaps itself. Yeah. And then we've got a bit of a, I don't know if you want to call it, well the chin's right here and I've been darkening that. So this is more of just the beard, but it was kind of going at a direction off this way. Um, I think he just stood up. He had been eating and he's got hay all over his fur. So that's something I got to decide with the leaf. If I keep the leaf, I have to make sure to put the, the hay in other areas or this leaf won't make sense. So that's why I'm still trying to decide what I'm going to do there. Now when hair is curling, when it's curling under, the bottom of it is darker, so I do want that. Let's see here. I think I put more of a curl in it than there is, but now and this is gonna be matted, and I think my mat's gonna be at least it well I know it'll be at least a quarter of an inch, so I know I had to extend down this bottom part. But it's going to be covered, so I wasn't really worried about that. Big thing is following the direction of the fur. Let's see here. So this right here kind of curves, actually. See, I get to go back and see where I messed up on everything. 
and try to fix it. It's the only bad part of leaving a piece for so long. Meryl says when you said 42, she thought you meant Celsius. No, Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. All right, so we got more of a dark in here. I'll bring it up. So even here, I know I started this one as a demo of the State Fair, which can always be a little nerve-wracking. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's where I started this piece. So I'm just using the tip of it to kind of where the hair is curly to kind of just do squigglies. And that squiggly will impart the feeling of the curl texture. Okay. Squigglies on this one is going to be my friend. But as I darken things more, hopefully, I won't feel like it's so off. See, squiggly, I'll do it in an area that has less burn. But doing this squiggly gives us that texture. Hopefully you can see it. Probably not. Um, it's such a big piece, I've got it pulled away. Pete wants to know if you've noticed any problems with the grain like you had with the Fisher Queen. Um, no, I haven't noticed that. Um, if I put the, if I go across the grain in a certain way here, I'll show you. It will, because I can fix it, hopefully. Let's see here. If I kind of, let me see if I can get it. Maybe not with this tip. With the 18M, I was having a problem. Um, let's see here. I've kind of hit it where it was the grain was grabbing the tip sideways. I don't think I can get it to do it with this tip. I was having that problem a bit. I think it was an angle I was going at. Nope. This tip isn't doing it. So it may have been the tip. Hmm. Um, but other than that, no, I haven't. This board is really warped, which is actually quite normal. So I'm not stressing about that because once I frame it, you won't know it. And the frame will put the pressure on it to kind of straighten it out a little bit. Because when I do my, the pieces that are a quarter of an inch, or I'm sorry, an eighth of an inch thick, um, I'll put this guy over here, maybe. I can put two mats and that puts pressure. Why is nobody looking? There we go. Because I'm seem to be working more. Ooh, look, we're red, but not cherry red. All right. Coming in. No, I don't, but I have found that if I don't, I, I would do more work trying to darken it. And at six, it's not going to damage the tip. It's when it's cherry red that it will. So I'm not going to stress about that. Let's see here. So we have wrinkles. This is where the two furs change because up here we have the cur curly matted. This is more long and thick. And right here is where we've got our change where the curly overlaps the thicker one. Two. Okay, I've done that. And luckily the graphite has been erasing from the board. Sometimes you do have to worry about that if it's been sitting on the board for a long time. I'm going to actually bump down the heat. Down to four because right here. Well, let's see here. What do I want to do? Using the edge. <coughs> and I am kind of overlapping the graphite here. That way it blends more yeah. with the other layers that will be incorporated, like the lighter here. If I try to 
kind of stagger it and overlap it, it won't look so like a straight line. So we gotta try that. So you can see a big difference in the heat now that I've turned it down to four. See the fur goes down here, that's why that line's here. These are my darks. So I'm just going to draw it down. So, so the smaller areas in this particular spot is uh, the lighter areas. Do I need to push the camera in? I don't think so. But let's hear what chat has to say about it. Maybe. I think I can erase there. Go. Do that. I was just telling him when you left the room about uh, the raven. Ravens being at the magazine. Mm. Okay. Well, they, the actual burnings won't arrive until tomorrow. Burning won't get to them till tomorrow. Alright. See here, I went. I made too much of a line. So I'm going to try to draw down and blend that line out, even though actually I seem to be on too low of a heat. So what we'll do is pop this face up. I put the darkness of the eye that's here, but I still need to go in with a ball tip because it's a smaller tip um, to actually burn it. I have to get darker in there. Let's see here. I'm trying to see what curly hair. Well, we have some curly hair up here. Dark curly hair up here at the horn. So let's see here. It's in that area. And I think what I'm going to do is actually switch over to a ball tip because I can get a better squiggle, I think. And we will put that in so we can, <clears throat> this is going to be negative burning also for the horn to kind of start shaping it. I'm going to go dark. And let's see, four. <sighs> Take a sip. So the large ball tip, oops, sorry. The hair does come over, actually, it's the shadow of the hair that comes over the horn. So with this, I'm set on five. I can vary this so that it is less uniform. And it allows for where there might be a little bit of light shining through to peek through. And what I mean by that is as I go up, I can go quicker and lighter. And see the hair is more of a, it's a, a crimped, type hair. Fuzzy, straight, it's not quite what would be an afro, so I can do some long uh, long ovals instead to kind of get more of the long texture. Let's see 
here. Let's put some depth into it. You see here, I need to go darker. that in there and if I get a little blob I'm not going to stress about it I can go over it and kind of blend it out or blend it into make it look like I did it on purpose only we will know that it was an oops Let's, so this fur is going this way. Wonder who his hairstylist is, because mm -hmm. it's quite. We've got completely different fur back here. So actually, no. This is the top. This is different fur back here. So this is the very. Yep. My photo is smaller than my burning, so I'm having to find my landmarks so what I'm gonna do is just kind of scrumble them in for now I can always go back and fix it this way I can erase a lot of so should I keep the hay in here because I think some of the lines I might have put in as hay because he was laying down eating, or he was eating, and then he was laying down, and then he got up. I think it's about the buffalo, though, not the... I think the hay is distracting for me. Okay, I think that means then I need to remove the um, leaf. In order to keep it... Because I don't think the leaf will make as much sense if it's by itself. Yeah. Beryl says it's Jimi Hendrix's stylist. <laughs> so I'm just scribbling around, but I am trying to go in the direction of the way the fur is going. So some of it comes up. Some is going straight across, and I'll go through and erase the the graphite in a minute, because I think on some level the graphite's distracting me. Like right here. Yeah, it's actually coming off the board. I'm surprised. There we go. Now, but I do need to pay attention to where this first start stops and the next one comes on because back here we've got thick mats and clumps in some areas. Some areas right, right here are more like yarn. It actually looks like yarn in the photo. Um, like we um, twisted together. Hmm. So I need to pay, make sure I pay attention to where each type of fur changes. Like I said, I'm not worrying about the blobs. I think the blobs actually kind of work in my favor for now. And the way I'm holding the pen, I'm actually just kind of sketching. Yeah. Back door closed or open? I think close it. That's a pay attention to me. I want to treat. So. Tighten up those circles for a darker area and less texture. I 
But I think this is already looking better than the other. I am going to have to put more. Let's see here. I'm trying to get some of the stringy lines that are going sideways. Now, if, I, if this was a smaller piece or he was further back, I wouldn't, there wouldn't be as much detail in him, which is why I made him as big as I did. And then of course, once you get into it, it's like, ugh, what did I do that for? But I think the details help give you a better idea of what the buffalo looks like. I took this photo at Arizona. Let's see here. So our line. Don't want to lose it. It goes up. Goes in. This is shorter here. I almost went across his forehead. I'm glad I stopped. And remember when hair is closer, it's going to, meaning when it's more facing the camera this way, see how you can only see the very small end of the tip versus the full tip. So it's going to be smaller strokes. Smaller circles for that texture. And I'm going to go in and blend it out a bit. At this point, I'm just trying to keep from getting off track. Because right here, it goes this way. I think that's the end it, and then it comes up. But I hadn't checked the, <laughs> the lines on this part yet, so I'm kind of kind of winging it. You okay? Yeah. See here it kind of goes up this way. And she's going to be a brat, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Darker at the base. And I can actually, I think I could probably try to pull this off with the 18M as well. <coughs> Just so we can see what it looks like. I think he'll do that. What, um, what do you think is going to be better? Hmm? What do you think is going to be better? I don't know. That's why I think I need to try oh. the 18M on this and just see. Mm. Because I can do the ovals with this one as well. Yeah. So it might actually work better because then I can get more stringy with this one. So far, I've only used three tips. Um, I'm going back to this piece. So I'm at five. What we're going to do is see. I see this one was where I was having an issue with this tip kind of grabbing. Because I'm just using the end. I think I can pull it off. Actually, I think this might pull it off better. <coughs> so, let's get rid of some of this graphite. The thing is, is I could start lighter and then just block in my darks. So, let's... I still have graphite there. <sighs> you her schedule down now, doesn't you? Mm-hmm. Hopefully that's not too loud for you guys. I'm just going to let her bark. It's about a treat. Of course it's about a treat. That's what she barks about. 
Yeah. And a tree. Alright. So actually, I think in the scheme of things, see if I try to go this direction with the tip, it'll grab. Yeah, I can feel it if it's not that I'm so much burning up, but because I'm going in circles, it is grabbing a bit. I don't remember having quite this problem with the trickel boards. But I am glad the grain hasn't raised. back and put some darks. Remember I can always go back with the ball tip if I want more squiggles but I will say in using this tip I kind of get more of a fuzzy look than with the ball tip so I think we'll stick with this one for now. All I'm doing is varying how I'm holding the pen. This is more flat. This is just the tip of it. So varying how you're having the tip touch down helps. Yeah, get some graphite. So yeah, I think this one, I, I like the feeling of this side better than this side. But with this side, I should be able to kind of work it out a little bit more. I do know, I do remember I was blocking it in, so I didn't go like full dark. I think I was being a little more cautious. But I can, I can blend it out. So that... So that each side looks the same, as in similar kinds of burns. <clears throat> because it is something I would notice. So I can use this pen to... Kind of blend out. It's about a tree. Hmm? And also about... Layla being in the spot she wanted to be in on the couch. How dare she? So she was yelling at her. Of course she was. They are definitely childlike. All I'm trying to do is figure out where my, my shortest point is. So, uh, Sian said Ruka was confused about where the song came from. Oh! <laughs> uh, and um, Pete said, you're going to seal outside your window. Yep. And Sian says, not at all. Ruka is suddenly really interested in biography. <laughs> <laughs> Should I move the pin around? Whew, can you catch it? Come on, Ruka. Oh. Trying to get Ruka's attention. Alright. See, this is a smaller area. It's not a very big curve. Which tells me these lines, and again, this is my own fault for not having come back to it and so on. But I think I can do a better job on it. As well. Yeah. Because what we're getting is a two-year evolution here, kind of. And I don't even remember what these lighter parts are for. I'm just going to fake it. Because even this part of the head is um, thick fur right here. So I, I'm not too worried about if I'm a little off. I 
I'm not going to stress about it. See right there I'm getting these lines. If I use this pen across the grain like this, it is creating some lines that I have to try to blend out. But I don't know if it's... Because I don't think it's a wood, though, looking at the wood, it's a little rough right here. And I'm not sure why. I guess I may have missed a spot. Click on Sand says, okay, now he's standing in my lap. <laughs> um, well, maybe he'll like the erasing, because I'm always moving the pen when I'm erasing. I think it's me moving Um... Ricky just wants to say hey. Me. Len has a question. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, you're very experienced and tried many burning devices. Have you ever heard of the Pabaro Professional Burning Station? I have not. In German, it's Pabaro uh, Profi Brandmal Station. Mm -hmm. And she says she's thinking about getting it, but she's unsure. Lana, are you in the Facebook group? Because you can post the picture in there. Um, we've got a bunch of people in that group. In fact, I think we're almost at 3,000. Yeah. I have not heard of it, but if I see a picture of it, I because of the information I do have and what I do know, I can look at a picture and see what might may may or may not be an issue <clears throat> with the burner i'm not saying i i wouldn't be able to say yes there absolutely will be an issue but looking at it i i have an idea of things i'm looking for like the thickness of the cord um how the con the cord and our pin connects to the base Trying to think what else I look at. How the tips are installed, if it's an interchangeable. Um, now I've seen the the Bryn Peters, or I think that's what they are. I've seen those. So if it's close to that, um, those just looking at them, I don't recommend. They're put together. Yeah. Doesn't look like a very comfortable burner. And I know Sian's having a problem with her. Um, Bren Peter Jr. I think the Peter Bren, Bren, Bren Peter. Looks like it has, um, is it yellow or red or is it either or? Because I'm looking at, oh, it looks like it's either or. Can I see a picture? Um, mm -hmm. I didn't think about Googling it. I'm <laughs> trying to do fro here. Um, it looks very similar to, like, I guess the razor tip. It's from, um... Peter Bausch's hobby shop. It has replaceable tips. <laughs> I'm trying to find a good a good one. So okay. Can see. Jason's looking for a photo for me to see. I mean, if that's all you have available to you, then I get in the end. Hopefully, it's a good thing. Again, because I know CN her stopped working. In less than a year, and I wouldn't say with with heavy burning on hers. Cause you gotta look at the connection again, how thick the cord is. Cause if, if the cord is super thick, it is not comfortable. It it really weighs on the uh, wrist back here. And the thinner they are, more flexible, it's easier to hold it like this. But if it's a giant pin, like the Burn Master, I can't hold it like this. 
this looks like. Let me see. Oh, okay. I've seen those. I have seen these. She says it's the yellow one, so that should be the right one. Yeah. She said she found it on uh, Gerstecker. See, those look like Burnmaster tips. Yeah. Yep. They connect the same way. I don't know how big the hand piece is. I have a feeling it's not going to be too far off from the burn master. If you get this, you may have to mark whatever works for your brain one through seven. I mean, I th Cause think I pulled up the right one, but you can see on my phone that Val is using. So hopefully that's the right one. But right. multiple searches kept pulling up the same burner. So. Yeah, that looks like a burn master pen, very similar to it. But the actual brand is called StarTech, I think. Star L? Bernie? Star L? In Celsius. I do not know what the numbers translate to. Yeah, Bernie Star L. Oh, wait a minute, there's a different kind. This one. Is that the right one? Because there's a weld, weldinger. It's also yellow. It also looks like the exact same. Mm -hmm. They all look setup. like the same one. Those are those are Burnmaster tips. Yeah, that's what I, I mistakenly <sighs> said um, the other one. But uh, razor tip. Yeah, but it does. This is the Burnmaster pen. <laughs> Yeah, like, and there's a red version too, but they also have a craft burner version too. See, they even have the this that you can open and take out the heating element and replace it in the pen. Uh, Lana says it's the exact one. The first one or the second one? Uh, we assume it's time delay, probably the first one, but they're both about the same. Right here. Yeah, see, this is the only difference is the. This part is a little bigger on the Burnmaster. The pins connected here. See, I don't like when the I I used to like pins connected to the cords, but that kind of if you're not paying a high price, I say go for it. She says that she has she only has it right now a cheap one to play around with, but she wanted to, but she likes it and she wants to level up a bit. She wants to know if the tips are good or bad. <laughs> I do not like burn master tips. But I mean, if you if you only have a craft burner, oh, if you've only got a craft burner, yes, it's going to be an upgrade. It's, it's an upgrade, absolutely. I'm trying to pull my burn master tips. It's not something I have close by. Can you open up the clear box here, please? The and clear box. Yeah, and burn master tips are on the right. Okay. Do you want me to hand you anything in particular? Mm-mm. Just okay. a tip. <laughs> oh, it's raining. Just a tip. Yeah, just give me the tip. Here. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right. So looking at this tip. That's a Burn Master tip. In fact, this is a Burn Master tip I've never used. Um, it looks like the brass is a little shorter on this burner. Um, I should have one of those tips. Let me see. Maybe. I don't. You're so organized. Well, that is organized. Well, I can use the writer. If, if this was me, they'd all be in a plastic bag with rubber bands. Yeah, I can't do that. Change. No, 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 I can't do that. So, yeah, these are very similar to Burnmaster. It, how much are you looking at it costing, if you don't mind me asking? I know. Um, I don't need you. Go away. There we go. Because I don't know if the cost is that where it's like a couple hundred euro. 
then I would look at the Optima over that. If it's less than that, then check the warranty on it and see how good of a warranty that is. That way, if anything happens, you have the ability to, to get your money back. Though they're more likely to try to fix it before giving your cash back. Alright. We got some stringers up here. I'm just going to kind of pull them out a little bit so I know where they're at. Go. Get some texture there. This goes down. So this means that this is later. I probably should have pulled my pattern and looked at it so that I had a better idea what's going on. This is darker. This goes off to the side. Get rid of some more graphite. Because I don't want the graphite showing through the lighter burn. And that's why I keep erasing it. So. You say by any chance how much to your warranty? Well, it's a hobby only, so I wouldn't go higher. So, 150, 170. Yeah, but that's how much he's willing to pay on a burner. Oh, okay. Because it's a hobby, and I'm curious how much that. Can you click on the website for that burner? Oh, well, sorry. If you click on it, it should give me. You should be able to see what like the dollar amount is for us. I'm not sure what the Optima translates to. Sheila, if you're still here, I know you didn't pay. I know it wasn't. Um, that's um, 89.95. 89.95 for one ten three tips. Yep. And the burner. Yep. And the Optima single with one fixed tip pin is 109. How does it translate the shipping though? That I don't know. I I think um yeah, see so that's the problem with that. She's gonna have to deal with customs and shipping. She lives in the UK and she can kinda of give kind of a number. I mean what she paid for it, and of course it's gonna be different in Germany. So I think it's like thirty-four dollars and um, custom fees for Britain, plus the shipping costs. And I think the shipping cost was something to Britain for a single with a couple of pens. I think it was around thirty-two. But how much it would cost for Germany? Um, you would actually. You could talk to Pat and get a quote from him because he can tell you the shipping costs for your exact location. The only thing he can't tell you is how much customs may cost you. But he can tell you the shipping and then translating to, what is it, euros for Germany? Alrighty. Oh my god. What? Uh, well, Pete says shipping is expensive. He was looking at an Optima and it was seventy nine dollars to ship. Did you talk to Pat and get and get that seventy nine dollar number because that is not um, it, it, I would find it very odd if Pat gave you that number because Pat has the shipping down and how on how he does it and how he boxes it so that it can get to you safely but cost you less in shipping and 
I'm almost positive he got the UK down to like $32 for a single and a couple of pins. You're in the UK as well. Gila, if he's still here, Gila has the Optima. He had it shipped over there. Um, I think he's had it for almost six months now. 79 doesn't sound right though. I guess if you're getting the dual and a whole, no, no, even if you're getting a, the dual and a whole bunch of pins, because the dual is the same size as a single. Oh, don't, <laughs> Pete, yeah, don't use the United States Post Office calculator, because, yeah, um, I would get in contact with Pat, and he can give you he can give you an exact quote on the shipping because he has a business account. Um, he has other options than what you see online. Because for me to ship the Ravens priority in my own box, yesterday it was $22 for a four pound box. Not a happy camper. All right. See, I am liking how this is looking more um, textured, and it looks better on camera, <laughs> too. I like that. I need to just always look at the camera for my art, well, and then I'm happier. It looks the same. You just, you're seeing it through an objective right. lens, literally, as opposed to your very scrutinizing, critical eye. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's get some of this in here so I can see it. And then I think we will try some of the um, clumps on the back so that I can actually kind of block this area in and I won't get lost again. So right here I do have Hmm. Looks like a gap in the fur right here. I should have done a better photo. For now, I'm just going to draw down so that some more strokes. Let's see here. This is going to be a darker area. Looks like it's darker. Then the end of this hair, but lighter than the hair around it. Did we lose Sheila? Um, no. She said she thinks that she paid about forty dollar cut, uh, forty euro, no, forty pound customs charge. But shipping with Pat wasn't that bad. But can only check tomorrow. Alright, I got that blocked in, and I think we're going to take the outer line for the this part of the hair, okay, so I can work on this area and have a better idea of what we're looking at. So, I know from my photo, this right here is a bit darker than this around here that does have... Um, does have. So what I'm going to do is darken this a little bit. You need to go in the direction of this because it's what's going to have it stand out from this. And I could even go in with a thin pen. Now let's see here. I think that this or this pen on a lower heat setting because when I put it on the edge it's going to be a darker line than I want. Let's see here. This is darker. Let's get that. <coughs> I'm actually going to turn down to four. 
So I have a little more control. That comes down. That one's this way. I'm just doing these light lines so I know where to follow. Since this will be in shadow anyway. I think we're okay. I still have some graphite here. We got about 23 minutes left. Okay. To 1230. We made a lot of progress today. This is because I haven't been afraid to turn up the heat. And I think that makes a big difference. And I tend to be um, a little more cautious. Yeah. And doing so, it takes me longer. That I don't want to go super fast. Now some of this graphite should wipe off when I take um, when I take the denatured alcohol to it. Get rid of these scragglers in here. Feels like coming to an end. Because I lowered my heat, I have a little more control with that. So we know right here is a shadow. So I'm not outlining the uh, the horn. What I'm doing is negative burning around it. That way, we have no lines. Uh, Philip has to go. Hi, Philip. He says that's looking fantastic. Thank you. Apparently, there's about two deer close to his house. Ooh. So, Go get photos. And the, uh, maybe that's what he's doing because he's like, see ya. Sit. Go get photos. Alright. So for this, I can just block it in lighter. I can come back and smooth things out. Darken any areas. And clump it up. For now, I'm just really trying to kind of block it in. Yeah, see, I have to watch how I hold this pin because it grabs a hold and marks up the wood. What I didn't mark was here. Things are coming down at angles. Put those in. All right. See, so this will work on heap. Let's see here, what other animals? Sheep, bison, goat's hair is different. Woolly mammoth. <laughs> Let's see here, what else would we use? I mean, because any of it will work on thick hair. And I can see my reference. Let's get this in here. But even now I'm gonna go back and darken, even though I've I've been a little bit more bold. There are areas that I will still darken. But I think it'll take less time. Like this area, this does need to be darker now that I've put in later clumps.
I'm not going to race the, the horn yet on this side. No. No, because there's details in there that I, I feel like I need to get down first before I do. So once I have this blocked in, like fully blocked in, then I'll take the, the denatured alcohol and wipe down the board to get any uh, leftover graphite off. And it feels like it softens the board. Now, I don't know if there's any kind of like scientific proof that that's what's going on. It just feels like it. Mm. The wood will burn. At least the Tracal board does for me. It burns a little differently, not in a bad way. It's almost like it allows me to speed up my burning. So hopefully this will do the same. Alright. I got that here at the tip. What is this? These are the dark areas going down this way. That's what they be. What is this? What is this? You don't know what that is. Now, actually, looking over here, this fur. On this side is actually similar to the fur on the head. It's more fuzzy. Let's put that in there. Since I'm already upside down in here. This I'll go back and darken. Because there are some areas. But now I'll actually be able to get rid of this pencil line on the side. What is that? I think that just might be part of the clump. Up in the eye cards, I have all the videos. Did I already say this before? I have all the videos, which this is only the fourth one I'm working on the bison and I did say that because I said you could go back and see what I did different <sighs> sorry it's been a stressful day today all right so we got some of this in here let's go this way get some of those lines in there and come back. This shows me. That's the edge. What's up here? We got a bit curly, like it's curling up a little bit. And when I touch down like this, I'm actually barely touching. I'm just kind of skimming across the wood. You okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Let's see what this line looks like. Hey, do we have a bit of buffalo back here? Hmm? So are we getting a bit of buffalo back here? What are we talking about? I'm, I'm working on the top here. Oh. Oh, okay. Are you awake? Yeah, I am. As the, the sun came out, there's steam coming up off of his Oh, that's cool. Roof. I was making sure his house wasn't on fire. <laughs> there's a lot of steam. No, it looks good. Let's see here. So our line is about here. Let's squeak this in a little bit. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of different textures on this guy. So. Do this. so, oh, 
got to remember that next week there won't be a live. we got some family stuff going on. So... And I've got to start working on the owl. I don't know how much more I'll work on this one until the owl is done. Right. So this way. This one look here going this way. This is going this way. Sorry. Don't yawn. But you make everybody else yawn. What do you mean? I can't do, can't do that. You just did that. Did you see the studio scene? Yes. <laughs> yes. Is that what you're trying to do to me? No, it's not. I just thought it was funny. Cause... That's a cute joke. All right. Let's see if we got, I do know I've got a bit of a hump up here that I don't have. So that means i got to do this. Let's give this guy his hump. Girl wants to know what kind of owl is it. It is. You guys have actually seen Georg. You have a piece based on him already. It's the same exact piece. They just want it on wood. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the same exact piece. It's Georg. Um, you can take it off the wall. Mm -hmm. But I just got to do better pattern for everybody. Yeah, this is off. Let's pull this this way. What do you want? Bend over and shut up. All right, Clark. Uh, it is this owl, but I am altering it just a little bit, and it's gonna have more stuff. So this is the owl for. Is he a barn owl or? He is a horn owl. Oh, sorry. Great horn owl. Sorry. Alrighty, so we've moved. I moved the guy, so let's see here. Where shall we work? Well, I'm actually going to bring this down and sit up. Let's get this in here. I mean, since you guys have the photo right in front of you, because I have it up on the screen, you can see that. I am not going exact. To go exact would, I don't know, hurt my brain. He says, amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, that's what's in the next magazine. Oh, in fact, I ordered, uh, this morning I ordered the spring issue of wood carving illustrated. So I do know you can buy a single issue. You don't have to just get the subscription. See, it's still not telling me what I did there. Why did I do that? Earl says that this is the same kind of owl as the owlets. Ah! She took pictures of that. Yeah, that is George at Arizona. Um, I took those pictures because what they do after they do the predator um, flight and discussion, they bring George out so you can get up and close and personal. You can't touch him, but um, I had the camera right there in his face. He yelled at me a couple of times. I was okay with that as long as I could get his picture. I told him I was going to burn him. Got a funny look from his handler. You had to explain again. You had to explain again. Yeah. I wonder how many places you wouldn't be allowed into if I wasn't around. If you weren't around, I probably wouldn't do that so much. It's fun. I like watching people's face when they sing. You do I'm it on purpose. I know I do because it's fun. I didn't know that. You always, you always... Well, in the beginning it wasn't on purpose and then we started joking about it. So oh, now... I don't know. I mean, not always. I don't always think about it. Let me see. I feel so off on this hump. Sharon wants to know what issue that you're 
The Graven piece is going to be in. They are. They told me they're looking at the fall issue. Um, is it like quarterly magazine? Yes. Something? Okay. As for the owl, um, it's going to be sometime next year for the owl. Yeah. They didn't have a idea for him yet. So they told me they're looking at the fall. Of course, I'm sure if something else comes up. I may get bumped since it is a wood carving magazine, not the pyrography magazine. But, and I do have uh, the uh, video for the Ravens, though that is a speed video that you could slow down. I did that originally for, and it's on paper, um, for the Animal Artists Collective that Eve and I were a part of. Uh, what do I have? I can actually go a little higher on my heat. See, I think this, yeah, this is more of a clump that I kind of missed. But in doing what I did, erasing that line, it makes a little more sense now. Uh, I guess we're going dark here. I am messing my trickle board. I think that burns a little smoother. See, I've got a blob right there. But I think if I put enough blobs in, it'll look like I did it on purpose. And be okay. Sharon says that she thinks it's exciting to see it in the magazine. Well, this is definitely my first time, and I am excited. And Pete says your Raven video is amazing. The final burn looks impressive. Oh, thank you. I actually think I did better on this next burn. Um, those Ravens, it was the first time doing the pattern. And having done it a second time, I'm actually going to do that piece again. I have some other ideas that I want to do with it. So I figured the pattern's already done. I can just transfer it and do it. Right. So here we got a hump. This is darker than this. And this is darker than this. But I'm kind of losing it right here. So let's put some of our dark hair in so I don't feel like it's all becoming one piece. We're getting close. Okay. So, do we have any questions? That is a good question. I don't know what we've been working on in two weeks. What our critiques do? I guess we could do a critique in two weeks. Because we will not have done the, have, well, no, have we done the May one yet? I know we did the April. Um, I we did, didn't we do? Did we do the May? I think we did. Oh, jeez. They'll tell us if we did the May. Because at this point, I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. Let's see here. If we haven't done the May critique, then that's what I'll do. If we have, 
Oh no, we haven't done May. I, okay, yeah, because the April and the April and March were close together, and yeah. I think maybe that's what it was. Yeah, we haven't done May. Okay, let's get some of these scraggly hairs in here. You says remember to like. Yes, please. Remember to like Eve. Oh yes, sub the love with Eve. I li um I like Eve's uh, May the Fourth be with you post. <laughs> On Instagram. It looks like so far we have no questions. Yeah, I gotta figure out is how far up it's supposed to be here. I can't help but feel a little off. At least it looks like hair, kind yeah, of. That looks really good. So. Definitely need to put right here is what's going to the underburning where the darker areas are is yeah. what's going to give this more shape. Pete says, definitely no May, unless he missed it and it was deleted from YouTube. Oh, then I didn't do it. <laughs> Girl says, no, if May one was done, it would have been done last week, and it's only the seventh day. Gotcha. There you go. Sorry, I've just had so much going on. It has been a harsh month, to say the least. Yeah. No more to go. Or to go. I've been pretty much absent from social media, which I feel bad about. I didn't even get a chance to respond back to Burl, which I feel horrible about. Let's see here. So I'm still, oh, I'm at four and a half. Okay, so. I'm gonna have to like squiggle these a little bit, like kind of blur them out so they don't feel so. Well, Spence says it's looking awesome. I think, yeah. Uh, here we can still go darker. See, this hair is actually going in a little bit different direction than the other side. What I'm trying to do is kind of balance them out a little bit, but as I look over here, I see. This is why I bounce around so much, because if something catches my attention, I'm trying to get over to it so I don't forget. Let's see here. Oh, it's 1230. Okay. So it still needs a lot to work. But I would say it's further along than it was the last time you saw it. And this is only like my third oh, it's time. Much, much further along. You know, let me I'm gonna it's gonna be kind of fish eye, but I'm gonna do this. So it's a little easier to see. Maybe it didn't. So let's back it out. Back. Beep, beep, beep. This is how big the guy is. Whew. They backed it out a lot. Yeah. And they still don't have him fully on the screen. There we go. Kind of. So, yeah. That's his head to my hand. <laughs> He's not a small guy. No. It's a lot of texture to put in, and he, I really got to get that eye in because it looks odd. <laughs> Throws me off. Whew. So. A lot of good comments there. Oh, let me try to read on my eyes are, I'm going to turn this off because it's bright. Eyes are, whew, I still can't read. Ha! 
Thank you so much, Sharon. It is a difficult bird <laughs> if you've never burned before. I wouldn't jump into something like this. Mm -hmm. But anybody could do it. Thank you so much, Lana. Thank you, Spence. Oh, yes. Bro finished her loon. It looks awesome. What thanks size? So much, say, thanks so much, Eve. What? What size is this board? Yeah. 12 by 16. Mm. So he is, because I've got an inch on the top, so he is 11. You've got the ruler. It's mm. to your left. Mm -hmm. Thank you. He's 11. No, I'm sorry. He's 15. Bye. Ten and a half. Yeah, that's a good. Actually, he's about fifteen and a half by ten and a half. He's not a small guy. He's not my biggest one that I've done, but yes. So if you still want to see more, there's an eye card right up there. There'll be a playlist for. It's not the very beginning of Burn of Him, because like I said, I started <coughs> this at the county fair, but it's most of it. And you are awesome. You can do this. You're a pyro artist. Happy burning, guys. Bye. Bye. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin.